Hello, good morning. This is our first video tutorial during this coronavirus days in which we are going to stay home and stay safe. Vamos a hacer este primer video tutorial para todos mis alumnos de primero de la ESO durante estos días de reclusión domiciliaria por el tema del coronavirus. Espero que en cualquier caso eh, disfrutéis de estos vídeos y sobre todo seguros en vuestras casas. So what we are going to do in this video is we're going to start using GIMP. I'm going to open GIMP for the first time here in front of you. Voy a abrir GIMP por primera vez. As you can see, my operative system is not yours, or at least not probably. Como podéis observar, mi ordenador, mi sistema operativo no es el vuestro, no es Windows. But Anyways, as you can see, it's very close to it, it's very similar, and what is even more important, the interface of the program is exactly the same as yours. Y en cualquier caso, como podéis ver, la interfaz de mi programa es exactamente igual que la vuestra. So, the first thing to bear in mind, la primera cosa que hay que tener en cuenta, to bear in mind, is that we are going to use this program in order to edit photographs. Not just only that, we are also going to do animations with this program. No solamente vamos a editar fotografías, es un programa específico para editar foto, sino que además también nos va a permitir hacer pequeñas animaciones. So, in order to start mentioning the main object of this program, which are the photographs themselves, we need to be in mind what a digital photograph is. Lo primero que tenemos que plantearnos realmente es qué es una foto digital. Well, it turns out a digital photograph is basically this thing here. BMP. You are going to find some old, ancient or very raw compression images with this extension. Vais a encontrar eh, fotos o bien muy antiguas o fotografías que no tienen ningún tipo de compresión y por tanto pesan mucho con esta extensión BMP, BMP, which stands for bitmap image. Well, and what does it mean? Well, it does simply mean that uh, you have been able to translate an image into single, very um, small uh, pixels, which are also called bits. For instance, what we are going to do now is I'm going to open, for instance, this taxonomy image here, and when I get close enough, we are going to see each and every one of those little pixels, which are well, not dots, but as you can see, little squares. Como podéis apreciar, según me acerco lo suficiente a la imagen. Uh, by the way, I'm zooming in. Por cierto, me estoy acercando, estoy haciendo un zoom hacia adentro. By the use of the following keys, usando las siguientes teclas. Control, us, eh, apretéis control o dejáis apretado. And then you spin the wheel of your uh, mouse o inmediatamente rotáis, rodáis la rueda de vuestro ratón. Spin, rodáis, ¿vale? La, lo giráis. Spin the wheel of your mouse. So, if you do not have your wheel, if you do not have a wheel in your mouse, si no tenéis rueda en vuestro ratón, then you can use the following keys, plus and minus. Si no tenéis rueda en el ratón, ya bien sea porque estáis usando el touchpad de vuestro, de vuestro portátil, podéis siempre usar las teclas plus y menos para acercaros y alejaros de la imagen. So, as you can see here, we have those bitmaps. Now, having said that, we are going to start... Um, we are going to, I'm going to show you the three main extensions. BM, uh, BMP, bitmap extension, is no longer used in a very um, common sense, in, in a very common way. 
Eh, el formato de bitmap, BMP, precisamente por lo que os dije, porque es bastante antiguo, it's, it's rather old, and it doesn't compress well the images, y tampoco comprime bien las imágenes, it's no longer used. So, the main three different extensions are, on one hand, the one that I'm going to show you now, which is this one here, GP, G, G, GPEG. GPEG. There are several ways of saying it. In fact, I've heard people saying GPJ, GP, GPEG. Well, I'm going to call it GPEG. Veis, este es el famoso JPG. Es eh, relativamente antiguo. Y sobre todo lo que tiene como ventaja fundamental es que es capaz de comprimir de manera muy eficaz imágenes. The main advantage of the JPEG images is the fact that it is capable of compressing images in a very efficient way. What does it mean? If you see an image, for instance, let me have a look into this image here, the typical puppy. Okay, this is the typical JPEG image and it is extremely cute. Let's go back into this one. Let me have this image open by itself. That's it. And if we go close to the boundaries and borders of this image, you're going to find out there is a certain blur of the borders of this image. Como podéis observar, según nos acercamos a, sobre todo en los bordes de una imagen JPG, dependiendo de su compresión, vais a ver que de hecho tiene como una especie de ligero desenfoque sobre todo en los bordes y en aquellas partes de la imagen donde los colores son relativamente homogéneos veis aquí por ejemplo por la parte de aquí arriba de la cabeza veis que claramente esta textura de pelos tiende a, a perderse un poco claro que a la distancia a la que la estás viendo y mirándolo en la pantalla de esta manera ese tipo de pérdida de calidad apenas se aprecia. And now in English. As you can see close to the boundaries and the borders and especially in those areas of the image that are presenting homogene coloring, the texture, in this case of the hair of our dog, is clearly blurred. It is losing a little bit of those details. Anyways, since you are watching this image into a screen and from a certain distance that loss of detail and quality is not really important at all. So this is what happens with a JPEG image. The second one which is rather important is what is called PNG. PNG. This is rather new in comparison with JPEG. The main attractive advantage of the PNG images is that they lose so much less quality in comparison with the JPEG. Los, las imágenes PNG tienen una serie de ventajas sobre JPG. La primera es que pierden bastante menos calidad. Su algoritmo de compresión es bastante más eficiente que JPG en el sentido de que se pierde, lo dicho, menos calidad, sobre todo en aquellas zonas de la imagen que os había mencionado. But anyways, it is not as effective as GPJ, and it has certain limits. You cannot compress a PNG image at the same amount as a GPJ image. Es muy difícil, de todos modos, bueno, es imposible, de hecho, llegar a las compresiones que se pueden conseguir en una imagen JPG con una PNG. Traducido de otra manera, si vosotros queréis enviar una imagen por correo electrónico relativamente grande, imaginémonos que tienes una imagen pues, de formato DINA4 como un folio, y tienes un tamaño límite en tu correo, eh, es muy probable que tengas que usar JPG en vez de PNG, porque si bien PNG comprime y además bastante bien, tiene un límite mayor de compresión que JPG. So, said in other words, if you are going to send an image big enough, 
almost the size of a DNA4, you probably are going to need to use a GP GPEG, a GPEG extension instead of PNG, since GPEG is so much more capable of a bigger compression than PNG. Otra gran ventaja de PNG sobre JPG. El canal alfa. Another very, very important advantage of PNG over JPEG, and it is the alpha channel. And what is that? Let me show you directly here on JIMP. Now, dejadme que os enseñe la siguiente ventaja de, de PNG sobre JPG. Que es, eh, ya, ya lo he dicho, ¿verdad? Sí, ahora me estoy repitiendo. No, disculpad. Vais a abrir todos ahora, si estáis en casa, todos aquellos evidentemente que podáis hacerlo, vais a abrir el programa de manipulación de GEMP. Imagino que lo tendréis en inicio, buscáis la cabeza del zorrito, ¿vale? Y lo abrís. We are going to open the GEMP program, as I am doing. And now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going into the internet and let me see because I was particularly searching for a very particular image uh, 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 uh. where was it? PNG okay whatever this is what you're going to do you're going to get into the internet you're going to Google oh that that's my mail okay you're going to Google that's it I don't want Oh, again, come on. Really? There you are. Google. Now. And so, you are going to search for the following words. Papi. P and G. Okay. Imagines Puppy P and G. Something like this. And we are going to try specifically to search for these kind of images. These are rather important. You see that background that has a squared, a squared background? ¿Veis estas imágenes cuando hemos metido Puppy PNG? ¿Veis que algunas, a diferencia de búsquedas de imágenes en las que solamente ponéis JPG o no ponéis en absoluto nada, de vez en cuando os salen estas imágenes con el fondo con esta textura que es cuadrada. That means that this image, this particular image, has what it's called a alpha channel. Okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to open this image in a new window, in a new uh, in una pestaña nueva, in a new ribbon, okay, and we are going to save it. Well that image and as you can see, for whatever reason, this image has a JPEG extension instead of a PNG. So we go back to it and we get directly into the link. And just when we get into the direct extension here, we are going to be able to... No, I'm not a robot. We are going to be able to download the image, as you can see, with this extension. P and a G. And if we do such a thing, nice, it's downloading right now. Here we go. I go back into Jim, file, open, and yes, I'm going to open. Where am I? Here we go. That image. Yes, this one. Like this. And this is the image. Now, and you may ask yourself, well, what is the big deal here? So, first of all, if we get close, you're going to see that the image has a rather good quality in comparison with uh, its size. La imagen, como veis, tiene bastante buena calidad en comparación con su tamaño. But, if we open another image, let's open another image, in that sense, what we are going to do is we are going to download another image, let's see, for instance, this same one, if you are at home, si estáis en casa, just get into Google, entráis en Google y um, vais a, por ejemplo, poner, pues eso, 
perro salchicha, ¿vale? And, well, okay, you know what, let, let me do it for you. Puppy dachshund, or perro salchicha, or whatever you want to, okay? And once you have done that, you have all these images available, and I just want you to select the one that you like, do some right click on it, and abrir imagen en una pestaña nueva, o whatever you have on your web browser, o cualquier cosa que se parezca que os haga en, vuestra, en vuestro menú, ¿vale? And this is what we are going to do. Once you have the image here available, you are going to do right click on it and you are going to listen up. Copy the image. Vamos a copiar la imagen. Vais a dar botón derecho sobre la imagen y la vamos a copiar. Okay? So far so good. Nice. Now we are going to get back into GIMP and we are going to file. This is new. And we are going to create from clipboard. This is another way of opening the images. Esta es otra manera de pasar las imágenes a GIMP. ¿Vale? Ahí está. What did we do? ¿Qué es lo que hemos hecho? I've copied the image into the clipboard. He copiado la imagen a lo que se llama el portapapeles, se dice así en, en español. Es la parte de la memoria del ordenador con que, que lidia con los archivos, eh, digamos, eh, de trabajo, ¿vale? Y todo aquello que copia se mete en esa especie de, de carpeta, en ese portapapeles, and once you paste it, y en cuanto lo pegas, ¿vale? Pues en esta ocasión lo hemos pegado aquí directamente. Vale, entonces, vamos a ver qué es esto del canal alfa y para qué sirve. Look, I'm going to take this puppy, I'm going to get into... Select. Voy a ir a selección here. Select. And I'm going to select it all. Y lo voy a seleccionar todo. ¿Vale? Estoy con el perrito del fondo transparente. Nice. Good. Now I'm going to edit and I'm going to copy. Ahora voy a edición y le doy a copiar. Now I go back into my other JPEG image. Ahora veis aquí que me he ido a mi imagen JPG. And We go into edit and we are going to listen up. We're going to paste that one. Y lo vamos a pegar. So, what do you see here? As you are watching, we have here on this right part of the interface, aquí en la parte derecha inferior de nuestra interfaz, fijaos bien, tenemos lo que se llaman las capas. We have what is called layers okay here you have that name here we have layers nice so every time you are pasting one image above the other it is as if you were working with transparent onion papers es como si estuviéramos trabajando con papel cebolla con films transparentes el uno encima del otro and since This image, which is a PNG, y esta imagen, que es una, una imagen PNG, como veis, tiene el fondo transparente, me ha permitido pegarla enterita, veis aquí, pero, como podéis apreciar, el fondo ha desaparecido porque es transparente, y eso me va a permitir, si empleo esta herramienta, if we use this tool here, which is the move tool, it's going to allow me to move it around, and so forth. Nice. Now, You may ask yourself, I'm going, by the way, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to delete, voy a eliminar, I'm going to delete this layer, this new floating selection we have here, by clicking here. Mirad el cursor, ahí, fuera. What would have happened if this image, instead of a PNG, what if it would have been a GPJ? ¿Qué hubiera pasado si hubiera sido un JPG, a JPEG, no GPJ, JPEG? Well, let's see what would have happened. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate the image as a JPEG. Voy a simular que esta imagen es una JPG. ¿Cómo lo hago? I'm going to layer, voy aquí a capa, layer, and I'm going to transparency, okay? And I'm going to do this thing here, which is I'm going to remove the alpha channel. Voy a quitar precisamente el canal alfa, algo que es muy particular de los PNGs. Ahí está. And this is what happens. As you can see, this is not transparent anymore. And if we do select all, 
and I copy now the image. And now I get back to my little puppy and I paste it. Y si de nuevo lo vuelvo a copiar todo y lo pego, ya veis que esa transparencia ha desaparecido. ¿Vale? And in fact, this one here, which is, which is a JPEG, if I get into layer and transparency, you are going to find out, yes, it doesn't have an alpha channel by itself. Como podéis ver, esta imagen que es un JPG, veis que efectivamente no tiene ese canal alfa activado. Bien, vuelvo otra vez a mi perrito que era originalmente un PNG y que ahora al quitarle el fondo pues ya no tiene esa, esa particularidad. ¿vale? I'm going to get back by doing control Z. Puedo volver atrás en el tiempo, ¿vale? Deshacer cosas dándole control Z. Control Z, ¿vale? Se deshacen los eh, las cosas dando control Z, así que si te has equivocado siempre puedes volver atrás en el tiempo empleando lo dicho control Z. Now, so far so good. And now we are going to have a glimpse into the third type of image, which is in fact the one that we are going to use for an animation, which is the GIF, the GIF or what I don't know, how is it called? GIF, GIF, I've heard it in many different ways. I'm going to close this window since I don't need them anymore. Voy a ir quitando aquí unas cuantas imágenes, esta también. So, PNG, neither, and this is the one that I'm going to show you now. A ver, una imagen, una imagen de GIF, puede ser esta. Mirad, esto es lo que se llama un GIF animado. This is what it's called an animated GIF. You see? Well, GIF extension is rather old. In fact, it's possibly the oldest of all if we exclude the bitmap extension, which is the oldest of all. Seguramente GIF es una de las extensiones más antiguas and it has a certain disadvantage well, a very big disadvantage. The first disadvantage is that you do not compress the image at all. The second is that it only can uh, foster 256 colors. Tiene dos uh, desventajas fundamentales. Una es que no se puede comprimir la imagen en absoluto. Es decir, que pueden llegar a ser bastante pesadas. And y solamente puede llegar a albergar 256 colores, a diferencia de PNG y JPG que tienen varios millones. And that's why GIF images are particularly good for drawn pictures like this. Es por eso que los GIFs animados funcionan muy bien para, para dibujitos como estos. And all those animated GIFs that you have probably seen, you are also, you probably have noticed that the quality of the image is not very good and th there is a lot of grain, there is a lot of pointy detail there. Habréis, os habéis fijado que en la mayor parte de los GIFs animados que, que os manda, que veis en el TikTok, en las redes sociales, os habéis fijado que tienen mucho grano, que tienen bastantes puntitos y de hecho carecen, digamos, de las transiciones de color que cualquier otro vídeo eh, tendría. ¿Vale? So, but anyways, the advantage is that first we can do animations with it as, as it is self-explanatory here. Lo primero es que evidentemente podemos hacer animaciones con ello. Esto es, es, se explica por sí solo. And the second is that you can play those animations, as you can see also here, in every web browser. Y la otra ventaja es que esas animaciones son relativamente livianas en comparación con un vídeo normal, sobre todo si son cortos, y los reproduce de manera instantánea e inmediata un navegador web como este. So, so you know what? We are going to start right now the activity. Vamos a empezar inmediatamente esta actividad de hacer un, una animación, GIF, una vez que ya hemos introducido este ejercicio. Pero de hecho, eh, 
la animación, el vídeo de la animación completa, lo voy a hacer en un vídeo aparte para que este vídeo no me quede mucho más largo de lo que ya me ha quedado. Acabo de pasar los 25 minutos y como introducción a lo que son los tres diferentes formatos importantes que son, recordemos, PNG, JPG y GIF. JPG es el que mejor comprime, pero no tiene canal alfa. PNG tiene mejor calidad, pero comprime peor, pero sí tiene canal alfa. Y luego finalmente tenemos GIF. No comprime en absoluto. La calidad es relativamente mala, ya que solamente alberga 256 colores, pero nos permite generar animaciones. Nos quedamos con esas tres ideas. Nos quedamos con la idea de que en este programa vamos a trabajar con capas las capas están aquí a la derecha ¿vale? y que podemos llevar como habéis podido observar trozos de una imagen a otra en now in english the three most important things that we have to remember from this video is the fact that we have three different extensions the one is the one the first one is png which the main advantage is it is a very good quality image It can compress very well, but not as well as JPEG. And the main advantage of PNG images is that you have a alpha channel, as you can see here. On the other hand, the JPEG images are uh, rather better in terms of compression. They weigh less than PNG. They are especially good for Uh, web images for web contents it is especially good if you want to send an image for instance through your cell phone or through your mail but it doesn't have an alpha channel and finally we have the GIF animations like these ones here GIF animations which are as you can see, rather um, rather poor in terms of quality, but it allows us to create it allows us to create animations. So try to remember those three main important things of this video, and we are going to see each other in the next one in which we are going to do an animation. Thank you so much. Stay safe.